balance, which kind of makes sense for us because it, it's always a debit balance. You would think factory overhead being kind of like an inventory account would always be a debit balance, but it could have been over applied and over applied would look funny to us because it would, it would mean that this credit here had been higher than the debits. And that's possible. It would just flip the account from a debit balance account to a credit balance account. So if the credits were winning, we would have a credit balance in the factory overhead. And that's okay because we don't, it's just an estimate. It could be over applied. It could be under applied. We don't know. We do, we do our best to make an estimate as close as possible. And it's possible to be under or over whatever the case may be. We need to do something with this 380. We need to make it go down. In this case, it's a debit. We're going to make it go down doing the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. Now, the other side we're going to put that to is like, where, where are we going to go with that? The other side, because we don't know which job to put it to. That's the whole process. That's the whole problem of us putting into factory overhead in the first place. And we're going to use, as we can see here, the cost of goods sold number. And our rationale for that is basically going to be that eventually uh, it's going to go to cost of goods sold. Because if we go through this process, we would hope it's going to go to factory overhead. It would, if, if everything was done perfectly, it would have then go into work in process. And then we're going to sell that uh, and then it's going to go into finished goods. And then we're going to sell this in this inventory and expense it in the form of cost of goods sold. So this 380, we don't know where it really should be. Should it still be in work in process? Should it still be in finished goods or should it be in cost of goods sold? It could be in either one of those if we had done things perfectly, if we knew exactly where to post everything out. Why then would we choose cost of goods sold if it's in material? If it's small amount in relation to decision making, cost of goods sold is the easiest place to go because cost of goods sold will then roll out to net income and then net income uh, will roll out or roll into retained earnings. In other words, it'll go away after this first time period. So that's the easiest thing to do. If we want to make this zero and not have to worry about this number, then we can put it to a income statement account the most logical one being cost of goods sold because it's related to inventory, which will then roll out to retained earnings at the end of the time period. And, and we won't have to worry about it. We'll start all over. So again, the question here often is, well, wh what happens to net income? You're distorting net income possibly by this 380 because maybe it shouldn't be in cost of goods sold. Maybe it still should be in work in process or finished goods. And that could be the case, but usually and hopefully it's immaterial to decision-making and it won't affect people's decision-making process. And therefore it's okay. It's justifiable to do the easy thing and write it off to cost of goods sold, given the fact that it is an estimate. Now, if it is material, then we would want to go back through. If it's going to affect decision-making, if this is a big number in relation to the other numbers that would affect what we think about the financial statements, then we'd want to go through and say, okay, we should go back and try to figure out which job it should be applied to. Is it still in a uh, work in process, finished goods, or have those jobs been sold and try to allocate in some fashion to, to the jobs and properly uh, allocate it out as best we can. Again, there's no perfect way because it's an estimate. This bucket is just an estimated number. So we can do a, try to do a reallocation and figure out where it should go. If we think the number would be material, if not, we'll do the easy thing here and just recorded the cost of goods sold. So that's what we do here. Now note also that if this number happened to be a credit, then we would just do the opposite of this journal entry. Meaning we would, uh, if this was a credit here, we'd have to do the opposite thing to make it go down. We would debit it and then we would credit cost of goods sold. And that might seem a little funny because you might say, why would we ever credit cost of goods sold? And because it's an expense account, it should only go up in the debit direction. And again, it's not about cost of goods sold. It's really about just getting this number to zero. We already know this number's wrong. It's only wrong because it's an estimate. If it's close enough, then that estimate is close enough. And all we're trying to do is make this zero. And we're kind of abandoning, abandoning the normal rule to cost of goods sold, which is that it typically only goes up in the debit direction. In this case, we'll make it go down just to, to clear out this account uh, here. And because it's low, it's, it's a low amount. So that's kind of an, our exception to the rule that I have said a few times that expenses typically only go up. So there's a few exceptions to the rule. This would be kind of an exception to that rule if 
this amount happened to be a credit at the end of the year, meaning we had over applied factory overhead, we would do the same journal entry, but of course the reverse of it to make factory overhead go down, we would have to debit it. And then the other side would have to go to cost of goods sold. We're not going to change the account it's going to go to. And it would look funny because we would be crediting cost of goods sold. But again, that's okay because it's just an estimate. Okay, so if we do that, then our journal entry is going to be a, uh, to a debit to cost of goods sold going from zero up by 380 to 380. And that's going to be this posting or posting to the general ledger. Then we're going to post the factory overhead. It's going to go from 380 down in the credit direction in this case to zero. So if we look at our accounts over here, we've got the factory overhead at zero. That's the point. And then we have the 380 here, which brought net income down. Now in our problem here, we haven't recorded the sales for the month yet. So the sales are going to be recorded uh, in the next process. We wanted to keep the factory overhead uh, journal entries kind of in the same place. So you can see them side by side what happens. So remember that this really happens at the end of the time period. Generally at the end of the month, we would clear out the factory overhead. Uh, and that's going to be after typically, hopefully we're going to have sales happening throughout the month. What we're going to record now is, is the next process that's within the flow of inventory, which is to, to move the work and process in the next presentations to the finished goods. And then some of those jobs will be sold recording sales and the cost of goods related to those jobs.